Today we're gonna start making a ukulele bass. Boom! Let me tell you that this is by far the most complicated and time-consuming project I've made to date, so please be prepared for hours of film and a vast amount of techniques and research. I didn't follow any plans because there are no plans online to build a ukulele base yet, at least that I could find. That led me to weeks of research and unsure decisions and procedures along the building process. What I thought that would make sense was to start by observing a real instrument. Since I didn't want to buy one, I collected a bunch of photographs and watched lots of videos about the Kala U bass. Fortunately, they have a few measurements displayed on their website and high quality photos to zoom in. What I did was to take measurements from the photographs and try to get a balance of what might be the real dimensions, scale and angles. So I started by making the mold. I managed to find a way to make the mold reusable and reconfigurable. So I drew all the shapes and cut them on the X-carve to make it reliable and easy. This way all the pieces were exactly the same. I then taped them together to make some alignment holes that could actually have been made on the X-card, but I didn't think about that. Next I started to prepare and plane the solid wood boards. This is a piece of mahogany that I had for years waiting for me to make an instrument from. All the wood I used for this project had been in my studio for years, so I didn't purposely buy any of it for this ukulele. That means there wasn't a big choice here, but still from all the species I had around, I picked the mahogany, wangi, paduk, and a yellow one that I supposed to be called mora. Unfortunately I don't have a drum sander, which have been super important to build such a project, so I had to rely on the double side taping technique to get a rather consistent thin thickness on the planer. So here starts the Wangi Saga. I thought I could resaw this board in three thin slices, but in my perfect world, Wangi is not a super hard wood. So I used the plow plane to create a groove around the entire board for the hand saw to follow. It did work well, the problem was the wood being incredibly hard and taking more than two hours with resting pauses in between to cut through the material with my Ryoba saw. Needless to say that I aborted this option after finishing the first slice and lucky or unlucky enough I forgot to turn the camera microphone on at this point so you missed all the slang behind the face mask. I got outside to the table saw and cut some more layers of Wangi and Paduk. The boards weren't large enough to make the entire back of the ukulele, so that's why I added a paduk strip in the middle. Also I thought it would give it a nice detail. I repeated the thicknessing process and cut the pieces closer to the final size.
I ran a hand plane on the side to make the edges nice and flat. Once everything looked good with no gaps, I glued them using a high quality wood glue. I placed the flat board with some weights on top to keep them flat to dry. I cut both slices to the same size and sanded everything before starting the bending process. To bend the wood is crucial to get the pieces wet and heated, so I submerged the slices on water for a while. I attached the bending iron to my T-Track table using these awesome T-Track clamps from Rockler and turned it on. It was set to 180 degrees Celsius, so once the red numbers marked 180, it was ready to bend. I had the mold put together right next to me so I could keep comparing the shape I was doing with the wood. This was much harder than what I expected, but I guess that having such a hard wood for the sides wasn't helping. Eventually I got it close to the desired shape and clamped the pieces inside the mold and let it dry for a few hours.
I repeated the process for the second half and realized they didn't come exactly the same. I tried to reshape them slightly but still couldn't get them to match perfectly, so I cried for a while and made a post about this on Instagram. I'm joking. But I did make some posts and stories on Instagram about little problems I had along the way and I want to thank every one of you who cared and actually tried to help figuring things out and provide some master knowledge about the encountered issues. Some people pointed out it wasn't a big deal that they were not absolutely symmetrical, so I kept going. I trimmed the ends to size and then I reconfigured the mold to shape the linings. I needed to add the thickness of the sides and for that I cut some strips of 2mm balsa wood which I do not recommend. You should use cork or hard rubber instead, something that is flexible and yet hard. I shaped it, stick it inside the mold and applied a layer of tape to prevent any glue to stick to the balsa but I recommend you using packing tape instead. Here I was trying to establish the correct offset of the inside part of the mold, so what I did was to fit a dowel with the diameter of the lining thickness on the two bouts area, and having the parts clamped to the workbench, I ran a compass along the perimeter to create the offset. I painted those lines with a sharpie and sanded the remaining material. I can now start making thin strips of wood and I used mahogany for this. And this small bandsaw is so bad that I can even stop the motor by pushing small pieces of wood against it. After every cut I took the piece to the vise and hand planed a fresh edge. With all the thin strips done, I can start gluing and placing them in the mold to make the solid linings. As I mentioned before, the balsa can be smashed down and doesn't make for an ideal material for this job, so here I was fixing the lost depth by applying two strips of thick paper. And now I can repeat the process of gluing and banding this on the mold three more times, which was incredibly difficult and stressful. I can finally rest and make some popcorn. A few hours later I release the pieces and cut some more mold shapes on the X-carve.
Here I was making the end and neck blocks. Head the machine carving little waist shapes so I can later create the waist clamping blocks. I curved one face of the block and glued it in place carefully. To make the mortise on the neck block, I used my router table with a 3 quarter inch straight bit. I didn't want to go all the way through and eventually I did cut the rest of the material but later in the build you will see me filling the end again so I really should have kept this the way it is right now until the end. I will connect the neck to the body using a bolt in addition to the glue so I want to make a recess for the head and washer. I gave the block a rounded shape just because I've seen others like this. Please note that there are many many steps I went through that I can't explain and I did because I've seen others doing it and because it feels or sounds right to me. I removed the balsa layer and reconfigured the mold so I could have two halves that were just a little thinner than the ukulele sides. I can now sand and assemble the waste blocks. need a way to connect both halves so I made these little connector pieces, drilled some alignment holes and attached some bolts. I identify them with some drawn shapes just in case I need to take them apart later and want to know where they belong. I matched the curves with some sanding and I kept working on the waist clamp.
Here I was shaping each line in. Before gluing the linings, I need to get the neck block in place, so I centered the mortise to the wangy sides and glued it in. While the glue is drying, I can round over one side of the linings on the router table being extra careful and using two push blocks to keep my hands away from the bit, as well as gripping the oddly shaped piece. Here I was just making a sanding surface. Once the top edge is completely flat, I can start applying the linings. Did I mention you need clamps to build this project? On the other side there's going to be a ramp, so I need to remove material at an angle. While the glue up is drying, I can start working on the bracing. For that, it's recommended to split the wood along the wood grain and start flattening from there in order to have as little tension as possible. So I worked my way out of the split pieces and cut some strips to make both the top and back bracing. Once the clamps got removed, I could clean up this other edge and prepare it to receive the back of the ukulele. But that's for next episode. I hope you have your popcorn ready for next Sunday's video. A big shout out to Rockler and Inventables for supporting this project, and I couldn't forget about the amazing people on Patreon. Without my sponsors and supporters, I couldn't really spend as much time and effort doing what I love the most. So thank you. 
In the meantime, hit the subscribe button and notification bell and follow me on Instagram to know what I'm up to. Oh, and go get your hands dirty.